do do I need to copy. Do 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 Join us, my join us, little ones. Join us. All right, that's happened. Okay. According to YouTube, I am live. Uh, you know what I love? It says, the internet can totally see you now. Nice. <laughs> Ow, what was that? Um, I moved my mic slightly and my uh, the springs on my microphone stand. Ah, uh, gotcha. So, I am live. As am I. Okay, then welcome everybody to the Wild World Role Playing Podcast. My God, that's a mouthful. <laughs> hey, you chose the name. True. <laughs> WWRP. Double hmm? W. Double W. Hmm. Yeah, that's what it's gonna call it. Double W. Welcome back to Double W. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Part four already. Yeah. Yay. Fourth episode. So I have so far my two people lovies. in my stream, and all of you, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Also, hope you can hear me. Let me know if you can't hear me. Just saying. Well, it should work. I test recorded a short test video and Zara could certainly hear you. Okay. I kind of forgot. My love? Yes, let's get started. Yes, let's get started. So, for everyone who doesn't remember or has not listened to a previous stream, um... Midnight has decided to sleep at Script's place because <laughs> right now she is wearing the armor of Queen Lupina. Mm. By the way, I can kind of hear myself through your mic, love. Oh, uh, probably. Do you have, do you have, one minute. Ooh, do, 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 do. do you have me on speaker or something? No. Speak. Ba -ba -ba. Better? Mm. Anyhow, she's wearing the armor of Queen Lupina and has, right now, not the ability, and I can hear myself again, not the ability to take it off. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Script is currently not with her. He is in the living room. And Midnight awakens from a night of good sleep in Script's bed. Mm, stretches and yawns in the bed, looking around, trying to remember where on earth I am. <laughs> you see Script's bedroom with the eight poster bed with this giant which is so big that ten of you would fit in there without touching each other the 
Red and Blue Carpet. Mm. Plush Carpet, by the way. Mm. And Brick Walls, which are decorated with banners of all kinds. You also see four doors. Two in each wall. Hmm. Gets up and decides to think. Uh, yes, decides to think. Goes to open one of the doors, wondering where on earth script is. Which one? You're standing now next to the bed. There are two doors on the wall opposite, right, left, and on the wall behind you. Uh, the one to my right? Left? Left. So Sorry. One, of, one of the doors to your left. Mm. You open it and the smell of leather and dust whiffs towards your nostrils from a dark room. Turns on the light. As you fiddle for the light switch, you find a kind of a holder in the wall. Oh, I need a torch, don't I? No, there's something in the holder. Oh. However, I need to set it ablaze? However, from what you feel, it is too thin to be a torch. Flex it. You hear a cracking sound. Grimaces. What did I do? Well, you just flicked the items that you found in that thing and heard a cracking sound. Yeah! Shush! Do you maybe want to examine the item? Yes, examines what I did, yes. You look down at your paws and see that you're holding a whip. Uh, puts it back, walks out of the room very quickly. Do you at least close the door behind you? Yes. Good. <laughs> I know I'm terrible at this sort of thing, but calm down. Um, think, 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 think. I go to the next one along. Second door on the left. Mm -hmm. You open the door and the smell of soap whiffs towards your nostrils and from the little light that falls into the room from the bedroom you see white tiles on the floor. And that is the bathroom goes to the doors in front of me. So, on the far side from the bed. Yes. Yeah. You want to open them? Yes. You open the first door on the far wall. And the room beyond is dark, with no smell hitting your nostrils. Uh... Tries to see anything in the dark while fiddling for a light switch. You can make out the vague shapes of boxes. Yeah, he's definitely not in this room. Next! As you open the next door, you notice that it is not actually a normal door, but behind that is an elevator. That makes sort of sense. Okay. 
turns to the doors behind me, right? Or to my right? To your I, right? I, okay, go for it. Right. I guess you want to open them? Ding, 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 ding! Correct, Amando! You open the first one, and you see Discord in a bathtub singing Le Miserable. Closes the door quietly and quickly. Didn't expect and that, did you? No, I did not. Um, next one, please. What goes to the next one? You open the door, and beyond, you see Ponyville Marketplace. Quickly closes the door again. I do not want to be causing, well, panic. Why would you be causing panic? Uh, midnight is sort of accepted by the princesses and a few others, but most ponies, when they see a wolf, run. Mm -hmm. And scream. Mm -hmm. That Yeah, so she doesn't want to cause a panic. Okay. So I guess now you want to go to the doors on the... Uh, on the wall where the bed is. Yes. You open the first one and <clears throat> you actually get a glance into the royal sauna. With Luna and Celestia laying on stretchers being massaged. Closes the door quickly again. Why does this place lead to so many weird places? Why not? That wasn't me. That was Midnight screaming that in, in, in the middle yeah, of the room. Yeah, yeah, I guess this much. Do you want to next uh, to open the next door? Yes. As you do so, you notice that the little light that shines into the room shows you that there is a plush carpet beyond, just like in the bedroom. Mm hmm. But the room itself is dark. Uh, tries to turn on a light. The light clicks on as you find the light switch right next to the door. See, that's where that should be. And you are blinded for a second. Blinks and looks back. As you look back into the room, you see rows and rows and rows of different kinds of saddles. And bridles. That is... Weird. Think closes the door and thinks for a second. Where, where, where? Goes to the elevator and jumps in looking at the buttons. See if any of them say anything. Hello and welcome to the automated elevator system. Uh hello. Hello. How can I assist you today? Can you take me to where script is? Sure, miss. The elevator starts moving so fast that you're floating in midair. Feels very, very uncomfortable by floating in air, slightly panicking as I flare my hooves, my paws a bite. As the elevator stops, you impact on the ground. Mm. Stands up and rubs my head. Thank you for choosing this elevator. Please 
Come again. Get the light as quickly as possible. You find yourself in the living room. Mm -hmm. Differently from how it was formerly presented to you, there is no throne anymore. Oof. Good, instead, that looked tacky anyway. Instead, you see four big red leather couches with a big mahogany table in the middle and a fireplace to one side of the room. Hmm. Admires everything in the room as I walk forward. Script is sitting on one of the couches, pondering a case of jewels. Hey, Script! Oh! What you up to? Eh, uh, hey there. Didn't think you'd be up. <laughs> Sleep well? Eh. Oh yeah, best bed I've slept in a long time. Though, to be fair, it's been a long time since I slept in a bed. Um. At all. Okay, then. <laughs> Are you... So, figured I... <laughs> no, no, you go first, Midnight. So, have you figured out any way to get this stuff thing off yet? Sadly, no. I don't think I have much power over that thing. So I'm stuck in it? For the time being, yes. Groans. Can you at least make it less visible? I look like a shining beacon here. Um, not right now, and I don't think uh, Queen Lupina would let me. Mm. See, this is a problem when you wear an item that belong to one of the five. Raises an eyebrow. The... Five? Yes. Wait. What? I told you. At the beginning of the universe, five beings were created. Queen Lupina is one of the five? Yes. No wonder she's crazy. Not many immortals stay as balanced as me. Raises an eyebrow. Yes. Separating your darker half and locking him into a, into a dungeon down below was definitely sane. And balanced. At least I'm not a homicidal maniac. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remind me why I'm the last of my species. Point. <sighs> Anyhow, while you were sleeping, I looked up that armor that you're wearing, and I don't see a way in any of my books how I could remove it. Well, pony feathers. Because here's the problem with it. It is actually bound to Queen Lupina's will. So... For me to get it off, she'd have to want me to get it off. Yes. What if I, I don't know, decided to help ponies and make it the symbol of pony, of helping pony kind? Would that work? I'm fairly sure she would still dislike that, but... Um, I think there is a reason why she wants you in that armor, and why that armor allows you to wear it at all. Why is that? Script pulls out a small book from one of his pockets and opens it to one page, laying it on the sofa so you can have a look. Goes over and takes a look. On the page that he has opened, you see a young wolf. Maybe 
early 20s. Mm -hmm. That looks exactly like you, head bent and all. Wait, why am I in a book? This midnight is actually not you. It's not? No. It's Who? the wolf that whoever turned you into this had in mind as a template when turning you into this. Looks at you, looks back at the book. Elaborate, please. I guess you can't read the caption since it's an ancient wolfish. Well done, no. He closes the book and taps the cover, which is actually written in pony. And it reads... Huh? Royal Arcana Lupine, Lupane Family Tree. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Any questions? The the demon pony that changed me into this form chose a f chose the form of a royal wolf. Mm hmm. Please don't tell me it's the wolf downstairs. Close enough. Close enough. The picture of the bull that I just showed you is a portrait of Lupina's daughter. Blinks. Wow, and she wants to kill me. Very likely has a good reason, yes. Because I look like her daughter? That might play into it, yes. But subconsciously, she also wants you safe for some reason. So, by giving me this... By letting me wear this armor, she's protecting me. But by not taking it, letting me take it off, she's wanting to torture me? She's kind of playing with you in that regard. A minor prank, I... really, if you think of it. Minor? She's in my head! Come on, shush, it could be much worse. Hmm, yeah. Just imagine. Like how? She's one of the five. She could seriously try to take you over. Then why isn't she? For the reasons I just explained. I don't think she really wants to. What a strange, strange wolf. Yeah. I feel both honored and horrified at the same time. Pretty sure she feels similarly. Mm. There's also a reason why I couldn't just kill her. Because she's one of the five? Mm-hmm. It's not that easy. Well, wait. Are you saying there is a way? Theoretically, but it has never been attempted. I wonder why. Because to kill one of the five, the other four must bundle their power to kill the one they want to get rid of. At oh. least that's the theory. Interesting, interesting. And we don't get along well enough to try that. <laughs> I wonder why. Have you ever tried li living for several millennia and getting along with your also immortal siblings? 
I haven't had immortal siblings to get along with. Be glad. Because many will actually, turn out very badly. Actually, that's wrong. I do have an immortal brother. Oh. I haven't talked to him in oof, a long time. But that's mainly because he kind of turned himself immortal while trying to figure out a way to break my immortality. Hmm. Basically, he messed around with demons and dark magic. And it basically went backfired. Yeah, never meddle with dark magic and demons. Never a good idea. Never a good idea, really. Agreed. But you tried telling a cult that. <sighs> Tell me about it. I can tell you, my mm -hmm. youngest son, he, yeah, mm -hmm. he is the reason why I made a section of my library restricted. Interesting. You might have heard of him. Who? Yeah. Sombra. Sombra's your son? One of them. Question, did any of your children turn out good? Um... I'll take that as a no. Actually, yes. Who? You might have heard of a unicorn mare named Mistmane. She's your daughter? Yes. Oh! Why so she's nice. Why so surprised? Because, well, no offense, but the fact any of your children, well, turned out good at all is kind of surprising. Well, thank the same. You. The hey, it, you said, just said your one of your sons is Sombra. Mistmane coming being siblings with Sombra is weird enough. Different mother. Well, yes. And, you know, being immortal alone sort of makes it hard to sustain relationships. Oh, you tell me. Only mm. once did I try to have a relationship with a fellow immortal. Who was that? Elysium. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, then. What came out of that relationship? Uh, um, Would rather not discuss? She is... Uh, my oldest daughter, and that oldest daughter of mine is not exactly the... Um, how to put this... Most liked in Equestria. Mm, who is she? Chrysalis? You know her? Wait, are you saying your daughter's Chrysalis? Yes. By the way, she's marked to come by for tea in a few days. Uh, I'm not going to be around her. She stinks. You know, I take offense to that. It's not my fault she smells like bugs. Like, rotting bugs. It's not exactly her fault, though. Understandable. Hey, when, I can, when the rain happens, I smell like wet dog. Well, I can remedy that, maybe, but... Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Boop script. Hmm? Boop script. Ah! What did you do that for? By the way, watch out with those claws. 
Oh, yeah, sorry. I kind of forgot about those. This armor's so light, it's kind of impossible to rem remember it. Script looks behind you at the tears you left into, uh, in his carpet. Follows where he's looking. Oops. Yeah, I totally see what you mean. They're sharp! Then why don't you retract them? I... Blinks. The... I... I didn't know I could do that. Those claws are basically like the claws in your actual paws. So you just think it and it does it? Kinda. Thinks it and the claws retract. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Now I won't be scratching at the marble floor or anything. Do you have any idea how annoying that noise is? Have you any idea how high the repair bill is? You're rich. You can afford it. Doesn't matter. Still. Marble <laughs> from the Dragonlands costs a hoof and a half. Well, good thing you grow back. Getting snarky with me, are you? <laughs> what, can I not tease you? Oh, you can tease me all you want. Good. Because I, if I, if I am immortal, as the demon said, or even if I'm as living long, I'm just long living, just like Mr. Queenie said, then you're stuck with me for at least a long while. Script starts laughing a little bit. What? Mr. Queenie? <laughs> Shrugs. So? <laughs> and hey, if she's, she's going to torture me, I'm going to make fun of her. I don't think she's meaning it as a torture, but to get back on topic, Midnight, you want to get rid of that armor, don't you? Yes, please. <coughs> <coughs> and as I said, I don't have any books that might have any information on it. But? But I know a place that might. Where? The Royal Library. In Canterlot? No, I was more thinking the Royal Lupine Library. But clearly it was destroyed years ago by you. So? So is there anything left? You know, being as old as I am, I have friends. Uh-huh. He points into a dark corner of the room where there is something that is covered with a sheet. A really What's that? big something. What's that? Go over and check. Goes over and pulls the sheet off. Revealing a big blue box. Wait a second, we saw this earlier! You did? Yeah, while well, we were fighting your thingamabob. He, oh. Gerald. He, the, a guy poked his head out and said, but I'm, a, but I'm a doctor, and then disappeared. Yeah, as a doctor. Always good for a little joke. Anyhow, he kind of owed me something, and uh, for the day, he borrowed me this. He lent you his police box that disappears? Mm-hmm. Okay. What's it for? Ah, uh, opens the door. Look inside. Pokes. Pokes my head in. 
and you see the vast TARDIS control room. Blinks. Pulls my head out. Looks at the box. Put my head in. Back out again. In again. Out again. Looks at the script. It's smaller on the outside! Uh, that's no. <laughs> well... Anyhow, this box is actually called Time and Relative Dimensions in Space. TARDIS for short. First off, that's a terrible name. And I didn't name it. Yeah, I'm gonna call it Cheryl. You hear a loud, disapproving gong from inside the TARDIS. What about Lucy? Another gong. So TARDIS it is? No answer. I'll take that as, tar as TARDIS it is. Okay, fair enough. Walks inside. So, how does it work? Enter the TARDIS with you. Well... He pulls out a book that is almost as thick as he is high. I do have the instruction manual here. Looks at the book and then looks at the script. Let me guess, you're just going to press random buttons, aren't you? Who do you think I am? I read the manual. When did you have time for that? Well, you were sleeping. I didn't sleep that long. No, you didn't, but I'm a fast reader. Fair enough. Hey, I all got right. through... I got through uh, all the classics by Ham Pony basically in one night. <laughs> Wait, so let me get this straight. We're going back in time to mm -hmm. the Lupine Empire mm -hmm. with a, you as a pony, the Endless Meal, Kinda. and me in their queen's armor. And their princess's body, yes. Do, how do you not see this going badly? Ah, come on, it'll turn out fine. Okay then, how are you expecting to survive? He pulls out a little blue gem and swallows it. What the? Can you still see what? me? Uh, can I? Yes, you can. Um, yes. That is good, because for 24 hours from now, you are the only one who can see me. Oh! Okay, what about me? You are their princess. I doubt anyone will dare to attack you. And what if I come face-to-face to face with the princess? Hmm. I don't know. Bite her head off? Yes, I'm sure the, the queen is going to let me do that. Hmm. No, in all, all actuality, the princess was... kind of a wuss, so... Just growl at her and she'll likely disappear. Okay. Noted. Alright, let's give this a shot. Can you teleport us directly into the library by any chance? Sadly, I don't think that this thing's navigation system is that accurate. Well... Fur and tail, let's give this a shot. <clears throat> and script moves over to the console and starts pushing buttons and pulling levers. At one point, actually getting out a mallet and hitting the console. What? 
Stop! Stop! You're gonna do something! You're gonna break something! No, no, it's fine, it's fine. The manual says to do that. And the thingy in the middle of the console starts moving. And the wheezing sound. And you feel like the whole thing is moving with you inside. This feels freaky. A few moments later, the wheezing sound abruptly stops. And the two of you are suddenly floating in midair inside the control room. What's going on? I think we're falling. What the hell did you do? Script try tries to answer but doesn't get a chance as a big crash and the sound of glass breaking comes from outside as both of you hit the floor. Groans as I get up and looks at you. <laughs> well, might have miscalculated the height a little bit. Uh-huh. Hey, you can't blame me. It's been half <coughs> a million years since I was here. <sighs> How about you poke your head out the door? Um, okay. Hey, better they see nothing than see me. I poke my head out of the door and I see that we have crashed into a building. Is the coast clear? Uh, yes, there seems to be no one here. Good. Pokes my head out too. Where are we? You see the debris of what seems to be a bakery. You crashed us into a bakery. So? Picks up, no. a, picks up a packaged muffin and tries to hand it to you. Muffin? Takes the muffin. And pushes it into your face. <laughs> okay, love. Yes. I'll have to be right back. Okay. Yay! Do 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 do. Hello, my little pretties. Hope you're enjoying this. Let me know how you are. <laughs> Seems as though two people are at least watching me on the live stream. Just so you know, uh, all the links in the description are to our Patreons, Twitter, and to the Discord chat, where you can pop in. And if you want to join, then you have to say what type of creature you are, be they pony, griffin, wolf, deer, wink wink, um, or anything like that, uh, and how you would enter. Though there are going to be situations where you can't join in. Last time, the whole idea was that there was no one else there. So, there was a bit of a thing where not no one really could join in but you can always ask and if you don't get that time this time you can go next time or you can just keep asking and we will try to fit people in for the fun of it because it's just for the fun all right <laughs> yay so much fun <laughs> So yes, hope you're all doing well. Happy Halloween, my little pack. <laughs> it 
Anyone dressing up or going out tonight? Hmm. Damn it, I wish there wasn't a long, 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 long. Like, delay. I'm dressing up tonight, though, ish. I'm wearing a onesie out. Taking my little ones out trick or treating. My little pups. <laughs> ah. I've got tomato ketchup on my hand. That's what I get for work for not being careful at work. So, what shall I talk about? Any ideas of what we should do? We've crashed into a bakery, so... Gives you all... Chocolate. Chocolate muffins! Give you all chocolate muffins! A polar bear? Chris, you're dressing up as a polar bear? Nice! We well, I am doing very well. Francesco Dash? Thank you for asking. Hmm. Hello, Mr. Flaming Kisses. Glad you're doing okay. Oh, I cannot wait. Oh. I'm sincerely sorry for, uh, for this, everyone, but it looks like what I ate for lunch didn't quite agree with me, so I'm back. <laughs> oh, love. Uh, snuggles. Snuggles. Um, so where were we? You pushed a muffin in my face. Yes. Takes the still wrapped up muffin, looks at it, and is like, really? Giggles as it, and says, eh, it looked better on you anyway. You hear the sound of claws on pavement outside. Looks around. You see a destroyed bakery. Oh with, no! With baked goods yeah. strewn everywhere. The tart is wedged halfway in the wall. Yeah, you did a terrible job at this. <sighs> <laughs> I might have just skimmed the chapter on landing. Face pause. You're kidding me. Anyway, which way do you think to the library? Um, you hear shouts from outside. I think there might be a slight problem. We attracted attention. We need to get out of here. There is a hole in the wall to your left, mm -hmm. where the TARDIS broke through, mm -hmm. and it's still half wedged in it, mm -hmm. and a door to your right. Uh, wall or door? Script moves to the door and tries to open it, but it's locked. Wall it is! Let's go! As you step out into the street, which seems to be some main street with shops everywhere, past opening times, by the way, mm. you see several purple wolves in silver armor approaching. Horse feathers. Uh Script, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? Stay calm. You've got this. 
glares at you slightly, but tries to walk confidently. The leader of the approaching pack um, approaches you. He wears a golden armor mm -hmm. with a red head crest. Your Highness, are you okay? Yes, I'm perfectly fine, thank you. What happened? We heard a commotion and came as quickly as we could. P.S. Did Script lock the TARDIS? Yes, he did. Okay. So, if I say I don't know, you might want to check it out. I was only walking by. And if something seems to have crashed. Find out. <laughs> Can't you give me any hints? There's a city guard. Of course they'll check it. Fair enough. Not sure. I was merely walking by and I took a look inside after hearing the noise. It seems as though something has crashed. You should check it out. Did you see anyone in the vicinity, Your Highness? No, no one. The guard raises his muzzle slightly, sniffing the air. I do smell a pony in the vicinity. Guards, spread out! Look for the intruder! And the guards fan out, combing the area. Tries to keep an eye on script, but not Look at script. <laughs> Your Highness? Yes? May I escort you back to the palace? Your mother is worried about you. She has been looking for you all day. What I do, what I do, what I do, what I do, what I do. I don't want to go to the Queen at all. As the guard sees you hesitating, mm. he takes a step towards you, um, pulling up to his full height, and he's about two heads taller than you, mm. looking down at you and saying in a deep voice, your Highness, I'm afraid I'll have to insist. Sighs under my breath and nods. Very well. This way, please. And he gestures you towards a cylindrical shape that is standing near a crossing further up the road. A cylindrical, huh? A cylindrical metal tube that is standing further up the road. Am I meant to go through that? No, it's more like uh, a cylinder with an opening in the side. Oh! So it's like a tunnel through... What? Gotcha. Um, follows, seeing, taking a look behind me to see where script is. Script follows close behind you, and you see a slight grin on his face. Hmm. Uh. Wants so badly to glare, but knows she can't give everything anything away. So just turns back and follows the soldier. Guard. Guard. 
as you two step into the cylindrical object, a door closes behind you. And Slightly p a script on the other side. No, you. He's in there with you. Okay. And you find yourself in total darkness. Uh. S is s quite nervous and says, "Where'd the lights go?" Don't worry, Your Highness. It'll just take a moment. You hear a switch being flipped, and on the left and right side, windows open, leaving, uh, letting in a little bit of light, and you see seats on either side of the tube, hmm. and a control console in the front, where the guard is sat down. Uh, sits down also. Script sits down in a bunk opposite you. The, you, you can feel how the tube is lifting off. And a moment later, you feel yourself being mm. pressed into the seat as the thing starts moving forward. Tries not to give away how uncomfortable I am and curious I am. And just sits in silence thinking, it's probably better if I just shut, just sit in silence because rather than giving something away accidentally. Script leans in so that his muzzle is very close to your ear. Don't worry, these transport tubes are very common here. Mm. Subtly nods and relaxes a bit better. Do you maybe want to look outside? Good idea. That's actually a good idea. Looks outside. You see far, far below you the whole kingdom of the Arcane Lupina rushing past you with giant towers, schools. You see a park in the middle of the city where there seems to be a late night event where several wolves are running about and others cheering them on. You see a suburban area that is clearly meant for wolves to live there. An area with what you can only assume to be arcane research facilities. And Smiles as I look down, absorbing it all. And further ahead, you see a giant castle with walls almost as high as a mountain itself. Blinks a little in surprise. Script follows your gaze, seeing the castle and nods. Yeah, that's a palace. Mm, uh, slightly gulps. Silently gulps. That's probably. Is that possible? Is that even possible? Probably is. <clears throat> yeah, you gulp, but the guard doesn't notice it. Hmm. And yeah, just stay silent. She's just saying, gonna stay silent. It's just easier. Midnight's default when she's scared is silence. As you fly over the walls of the castle, you see dozens and dozens of silver-clad guards patrolling the walls. Mm. None of them even stopping to chat or being neg negligent in their duties. 
is subtly impressed. By what? Have you seen the equestrian guards? I'm sorry, but comparing that... <laughs> yeah, right. Cake break. Um, okay. The head guard puts the transport tube down on a little landing pad that is elevated above the castle's grounds. Mm. The door opens and he gestures for you to leave. Gets out. Script follows you and you f see the transport tube lifting off once more. So the guard didn't fo the guard didn't follow me. Mm -mm. But Look. another one is awaiting you at the transport pad. <laughs> Walks over. Uh. He bows so deep that his muzzle almost hits the floor. G good evening, your highness. G good evening. Um, well, I'm back. <laughs> no need to anyone to be worried anymore. <laughs> your mother will be most pleased, your highness. Now, she's awaiting you in the throne room. Oh, okay. Um. He looks at you, blinking slightly. Is anything the matter? No, no, not at all. Just... <laughs> he cocks his head at you. Have, have you maybe forgotten the way? <laughs> you caught me. Sorry. He chuckled slightly and starts to move ahead. It isn't the first time, so no worries. <laughs> Thank you. Follow suit. You move through impressive white marble hallways that are on both sides decorated with portraits and statues of Queen Lupina in different poses. Gives, uh, subtly gives Script a look of, wow, she's full of herself. He gives you a slightly sad grin as he points a hoof at a particular painting. Looks at it. It depicts her eating his heart. Slightly chuckles. He sighs and continues to follow you. <laughs> and after a few moments, you reach a big, really big red wooden door that is decorated with golden crests and inlays. Looks out of impressed. He here we are, your highness. I'm sadly not allowed inside, so I'll take my leave now. And he walks off. Thank you. He doesn't uh, see you no more. Mm. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? Anyone around? Mm -mm. Okay. Script moves up next to you and, in a stage whisper, tells you, "For a lupine, for a lupine royal, you're way too nice." I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, I'm. I'm <sighs> to 
So what, I should be rude? Be full of yourself. Mm. Just always assume that the person that you're talking to is lesser than you. Question. Yes. Should we just should we just scarp or do we have to go in there? If you scape her now, every guard in the place will be looking for you in the next five minutes. <sighs> Okay, second question. Do I have to bow to my mother? It would be the best if you didn't. Didn't. Got it. Would Wasn't seen, sure. Would be seen as a sign of weakness. <sighs> okay, okay. Get behind me then, pony. Smirks at you. That's the spirit. <laughs> gets behind you. Opens the door and walks in. Inside, you see a gigantic room that has marble pillars on the sides holding up the roof of the place. And from the door to the quite impressively huge throne that is sitting on the far wall mm. there is a red carpet launched in a very very undignified position on the throne is Queen Lupina kind of picking at her nose walks walks forward uh, she looks at you sideways. You were looking for me, mother? Yes, I was. Since yesterday, in fact. Where have you been? I should have asked scripted about that. Where have I been? Uh, <laughs> okay, this is not me saying out loud, by the way. Uh, just around. Can I not go for some time by myself? Certainly not. Mm. If I summon you, then you have to be there. What do Fine. you think everyone else is thinking if even my own daughter doesn't obey me? <sighs> Fine. I will be... Next time, I will come immediately. I would sure hope so. You missed the execution. Execution? You know, of your chambermaid. Oh, yes. Completely slipped my mind. So you are no longer angry with me for sentencing her, sen sentencing her to death? Ooh, meta, meta, meta. Just qu question. Question! Mm -hmm. Am I mm -hmm. right in thinking that actually Lupina's, Queenie's sis, uh, daughter was actually more kinder than normal? One of the reasons why Lupina and uh, her daughter didn't get along so well was because Lupina usually referred to her as her little pony lover. Ooh! Gotcha! Gotcha, 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 gotcha! I'm playing this. Alright, let's go. <laughs> hey, I'm a writer. I can catch on to these things pretty quick sometimes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I can't stay mad at you for ever, now can I? 
That would be futile. She kind of raises an eyebrow, now looking at you completely. Oh, really? I think the last time you spoke to me, you said something like, I will never, ever forgive you, even if it takes me a million years? She... Midnight sort of is trying to figure out what on earth is going on. And she... sort of sideways glances. Script shrugs. And kind of makes <sighs> a kissy face at you. Midnight shakes her head. Look. Do you want... Which would you rather? The queen... The queen's daughter running off? Or one that's at least gonna put up with her? You're right. I probably won't forever properly forgive you for doing that. But I'm not gonna abandon the kingdom. Or my pack. So it looks like you have finally... Accepted your role. That's at least something. Midnight rolls her eyes slightly. <sighs> well, at least I pleased you finally in some way. I didn't say I was pleased. Mm. Oh, my mistake. Start. Now, let's not dwell on these things. He is dead, and we can move on. How about we go for dinner together? Sure, why not? She gets off the throne. Stretching. Then looks at you again. And by the way, next time you run off, please don't take my armor. I might need it. Chuckles. Looking down. Oh yeah. I'll be honest, I forgot I was wearing this. She rolls her eyes. Easily done. Almost feels as if you're wearing nothing at all, is it? <laughs> Pretty much. She walks up to your side and, to your surprise, nuzzles you. Nuzzles back. A little. Surprised. <laughs> Now, but I think it would be better if you took it off now. It's not quaint to wear armor for dinner. Not unless it's with enemies. Uh. Tries to take it off. And the buckle's actually open. Shakes my fur a bit. Uh, shakes myself. And the armor Better? flatters to the floor. <laughs> yes, much better. Now, just leave it there. I'll have one of the boys clean it up later. Script kind of panically uh, is motioning to you to to you, then to the armor, and shaking his head. Oh, sh oh, yes. Yeah, sh they can't. They can't. She needs it. She needs to keep it. Uh. Uh. No, though, that's quite all right. I can put it back. Besides, would wouldn't want anything to happen to it, just in case. 
The queen chuckled slightly and then looks at the armor. You know a dragon could step on that thing and it wouldn't take a dent. True. But I'd rather have... I'd rather keep my conscience at, at bay. I mean, wouldn't want someone doing something stupid. I have no idea what you are talking about, daughter. But... Okay. If you insist on wanting to clean this up later, then I will not forbid it you. <laughs> and then she kind of wraps her tail around your neck and starts leading you towards a door in the far side of the room. Uh, let's myself be led and sort of flicks my tail in Scrip's direction, telling him to maybe grab it if possible. You hear a little bit of wrestling behind you. Uh, glances over my shoulder. You see Script, who has pulled out a giant sack from one of his pockets and who is just stuffing the queen's armor inside of it. Looks back at the uh, queen and keeps walking. And the queen, the queen opens the door to the dining hall. Where you see a big table with ten chairs on either side mm -hmm. and one on the head and bottom of the table. Mm -hmm. Each um, place has a golden plate and silver cutler cutlery mm -hmm. and a satin napkin. Mm -hmm. And off to the side stands a little table on which you see script chained to the table with various cutting utensils on the table with him. Midnight grimaces a little. The queen chuckles and looks at you. <sighs> What's the problem, daughter? Nothing. Uh -huh. The queen moves over to the table where script is laying and takes a knife, cutting off part of his stomach and putting it on a plate which she hands to you. Then cuts off the other part for herself. The script on the table seems to be in a daze. Not screaming or anything as his flesh regrows. Uh, okay, that's creepy. It's meant to be. It's I know. Halloween. I know. Oh, this is why. This makes sense. <laughs> this is why. This is totally sense. <laughs> hmm? Just there. And no, just Chris, I'm not every... going for the kill. Just going um, meta here for a second, guys. Midnight didn't know anything about this scenario before we started. No, I didn't. Here's the thing. He makes up the scenarios and I just play along with them. Mm hmm And no, Chris, I'm not going for the kill. I'm not going to kill, try and kill one of the four. Five. Or five. Well, yeah. So, yeah, no. So, Queen Lupina sits down at the table. 
Mm. Starting to eat the fresh meat that she just got on her plate. Gesturing to a to a chair next to her. Walks over. Trying to shake the image of script out of her head. And joins her. Eating slowly. She chews slightly, swallows, then looks at you. Ah, oh, come on, daughter. I know you don't enjoy eating ponies, but come on. We are carnivores. They are herbivores. They are prey animals. They are our food. When will you finally get over this? Minite thinks for a second. In her mind, she's thinking. So, this means that the princess was someone who actually liked ponies. Wanted to befriend them. I wonder what happened to her. I wonder where she is. But maybe... Maybe I could try and convince her? but I highly doubt it would work. But at least this means I can speak my mind. A little. She swallows again. Pray or not, they are still sentient beings and should be treated as such. Sentient, but far less intelligent. How else would have would have we would we have been able to domesticate them so easily? Then it chuckles a little. I'm sure if you gave them something, something to work out, they'd work it out eventually. Maybe in a few generations, but they'd work it out. Eventually is not good enough. We are predators. Love, we, it's just in our nature to eat them. In our nature, and what is right is not the same thing. You know, you can really be glad that you are my daughter. Everywhere else, this would be traitor talk. Mm. Midnight sighs. I am grateful that you are my mother. And she leans over and gives you a slightly bloody lick on the cheek. Grimaces in slight embarrassment. You see script on the other side of the table, grimacing slightly as you eat his past self. Smiles a little sadly, Adam. So, my dear, what have you been up to these last few days? Thinking, mainly. I else do you think I came to the decision? Hmm. I know, dear. I know. It's not easy being a ruler. And it's certainly not easy being you. I know that some in the Senate think that you should be like me. They think that... The way you are is only going to weaken our kind. I don't want to weaken our family, our pack. I know. And I keep telling them that. You have no idea how many of them have asked for your removal. 
removal. She raises an eyebrow. Yes. Removal. Thank you for standing up for me. She reaches out a paw and strokes you slightly on the cheek. How could I not? You are my daughter, after all. The Mm -hmm. only child I ever bore in all the years of my life. Hmm. Well, maybe if if, if I had, had had siblings, they'd be more like you. She kind of raises both eyebrows and her ears perk up. Midnight shrugs. Midnight shrugs. What? Then I wouldn't cause you so much trouble. (sighs) Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I just should have spent more time with you. But ruling our kind is not easy. Midnight chuckles. Yeah. I mean, having a pack this huge. Well, can you really keep track of everyone? She chuckled slightly. No, not really. You know, I can run a census every day and the numbers will always change. (laughs) <laughs> the downside one of the downsides to ruling a growing com- a ro- a the downsides to ruling a pack that's ever ever growing you tell me <laughs> and one day it will be your task to do this hmm. I'll try not to disappoint you Good. Now, I think you should go off to your studies. It's not quite too late yet. I have an appointment myself that I kind of have to keep, sadly. Midnight chuckles. Just like always. Don't worry, I'll go study. Good. Do you want one of the servants to uh, show you the way? Then it rubs the back of her head slightly. (laughs) Yes, please. It is no trouble. You always had a terrible sense of orientation. She uh, takes up a bell from the table and rings it, summoning a servant that kind of looks like the guard that greeted you earlier. Bring my daughter to the library. Her teacher should already be waiting. Yes, your highness. The queen leans over and hugs you very gently before moving back to the throne room. Gets up slowly and turns to the to the servant. Lead the way. This way, please. And you start following the servant as script is moving up next to you. <clears throat> Whispering. You know, seeing myself dragged up there, really not so nice. Whispers back. A great dare. That creeped me out. Was it at least tasty? Nope. At least something. I don't have to worry that you're trying to eat me. (laughs) 
Don't worry, never. Good. Question, should we try to get out of here? Well, we did want to go to the library. True. Then again, you have lost the armor. True. We'll go to the library and then we'll we'll get out later, okay? That certainly sounds like a plan. Miss? Yes? The library. And the servant points at an, at an archway that leads into a library that is constructed in a rectangular manner with spires running up to the ceiling and shelves that go just as high. You're excused. Thank you. And he scampers off very quickly. Do you enter the library? Yeah, why not? Teachers are waiting for us. We don't want to give too many things away. As you enter the library, you see an old wolf in a blue robe sitting at one of the tables reading a book. This wolf looks kind of familiar to you. Looks at script, raising an eyebrow. In so in a way of is that who I think it is way? Yes, he's the guy from the book. He won't recognize me, will he? What? He won't recognize me, will he? To be quite honest, Midnight, his imprint won't meet you until like he checks an imaginary watch on his wrist. Hmm. About 500,000 years in the future. From now. Fair enough. Uh, walks. Walks forward, clearing my throat. <clears> throat> ah! The old wolf kind of jumps up, putting a paw to his chest. Prince Lily! Princess Lily! Uh, don't scare me like that! <laughs> hey there! Hey! Have you been practicing sneaking? Well, of course. I must admit, you have gotten much, much better at it. Just three days ago, when we had our last lesson, I could hear you from a mile away. Maybe your hearing's getting worse. He kind of scowls at you. Do you, do you think I'm old? No, not at all. I am a wolf in his best years, I'll have you know. Of course. So, remind me, where did we leave off? Looks at Script. Script kind of shrugs. Meta, what did I do? 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 <laughs> Why do I think this is a good idea? I should have just laughed. I should have just laughed. Yeah. Why don't you just uh, ask him what he thinks? What's the last thing you did? Good point. Mm, what do you think you, was the last thing we did? Hmm. He looks at his notebook that is laying next to the books that he was reading. According to my notes, I was teaching you about lupine law and weather spells. Does that sound about right? I think so, yes. Okay. 
Then you will certainly have no problem uh, reciting to me the Book of Law, paragraph 4, when it comes to theft. Midnight blinks at him. Uh... Um. Well. <laughs> I I can't remember. The wolf sighs very loudly. <sighs> Princess, you really have to take your studies more serious. One day you will lead this great nation. And very likely I will not be here to remind you of every single one of our laws. Midnight nods. True. I will try to take it more seriously. But would you be so kind as to remind me? In the regards of theft, paragraph 4 of the Book of Law says the following. Depending on the value of the item stolen, if it does not exceed... 3% of the daily income of the original owner. Then the thief gets away with a warning if it is a first-time offense. If it does exceed 3% of the daily earnings of the original owner, there will be jail time from up to a year for the thief. If it were to exceed 40% of the daily income of the original owner, execution is the way to go. Sounds fair. Queen Lupina is quite fair in her lawmaking. <laughs> so her revisions sometimes give me a headache. Chuckles. Our law needs some revision sometimes. Seriously? Just the other day she passed a law that forbade certain mating practices. Really? Yes. Pretty sure what? you were the cause of it. Oh. It's a downside if your mother is a queen. Is he actually cr criticizing the queen? No, he's criticizing you. Ah. Oh! Well, I'm sorry that I caused so much dis disagreement with you. <sighs> it's alright, it's alright. Anyway, mating with a pony might have been a bad idea on your part. Midnight's ears perk up, and she can't, she just about withholds her shock. Just be glad that she forbade all of us to talk about it, otherwise the press would be all about it. The scandal of it. I mean, just you having... A pony chambermaid. That was one thing. But just to... Yeah. Anyway. Midnight suddenly looks at script and then turns back to the pony. Shall we continue? Sure. Make it rain. What? You hurt me. Make it rain. Question. Does he mean outside or inside? I'm not asking him that. Inside. 
inside. Okay. He wants you to summon a sm small storm cloud and make it rain. At least for a few seconds. Uh... Uh, closes my eyes looking around at the magic and plucks one in the air your magic reaches out to pluck a storm cloud from outside pulling it in through the window and making it rain right above the poor wolf's head that is not what I meant, and I think you know it. <laughs> he says as he closes his eyes for a second, dissipating the storm cloud you pulled into the room through a window, and shakes himself, making you a little bit wet. Shakes my fur as well. No. Can we stop playing little pup games? Midnight Sharks. Hey, you told me make it rain. So I did. He closes his eyes and suddenly the moisture in the air um, pulls together over your head, forming a very dark storm cloud. Looks up. Looks back at the pony, at Wolf, and goes, Yeah. That's what you meant. Of okay. Course. And believe me, even though you're the princess, if you do not do this right this time, I'll make this cloud follow you along for the next few days. Okay, okay. Uh, wait, how can she... How can he, she make a rain cloud now if he, all the moisture in the room is in the rain cloud that he's just made? Logic! I didn't say all the moisture in the room. I said the moisture in the air. It's not all of it. There's still <laughs> some left. Okay, okay. Closes my eyes and... As re you, hmm? And as you close your eyes you see the moisture in the air as a kind of mist. Tries to gather it all together to make a storm cloud with magic. i just hoping I pass. I could just say I do it, but... And eh. you do pull together a cloud. Not one dark enough? Do you open your eyes? Opens my eyes. You see a white fluffy cloud that looks like a bunny. Chuckles. Uh, well, I got that part done. A bunny. Tell me, princess. Did you not have dinner yet or something had dinner but I would have rather have rabbit well I think I think you should have told the chef that because rabbit is very rare recently anyhow at least you got a cloud together you'll certainly have to work on that one more Well, one paw step at a time. Okay. Then, how about a growing spell? Growing spell? Yes. Enlarging an item or a life form. Okay. Anything in particular? He points at a plant that is standing in the corner. Midnight thinks for a second, closes her eyes, looking at the plant. You see it glowing very faintly with magic. 
pulls at one of the strings, trying to make it bigger. You manage to make the flower sway a little. Riles a little. <clears throat> Princess. Yes? Could it be that you're just not into studying tonight? Midnight size. Well, it has been a crazy couple of days. Thought so. Because, quite honestly, growing spells are usually your forte. And he flicks a paw and the thing suddenly grows ten feet. Midnight rubs the back of her head. Guess I'm just mentally drained. That's one way to put it. I'll have the servant bring you back to your quarters. Because, quite honestly, this isn't going anywhere. Well, and he, sorry, and go on. He, he, and he rings the bell that is on the table, summoning back the same servant from before. I wish you a good night, princess. I will get back to my studies, and you better read up on what we talked about today. Otherwise, next time I will really make a storm cloud follow you all day and keep your fur wet for at least 45 hours. Understood. Good. And then he sits back down and starts reading his book again. Your Highness? Lead me to my room. Very well. And he walks off towards a tower that has a spiral staircase. Follows. And you go round and round and round and the script walks behind you. Because there's not enough space for him to walk next to you. He is slowly feeling slightly dizzy. So, how do you like the kingdom so far? It's pretty advanced. Well, before they died out, they were actually working on a space program. Wow. Well, scientific advances were very prominent here. They have, can... entire, they have an entire district of the city dedicated to science only. I saw. Very interesting stuff there, to be sure. Then I have a question. Yes? Why haven't the ponies ever find any of this stuff out? And you reach a pure gold door with a red gem as a door handle. Y your room, your highness. You're excused. Thank you. He bows and scampers off as fast as he can. I have a feeling he's like my personal servant or something. Actually, he is. Oh. Walks in the... Opens the door. You notice that the door is as light as a feather, even though it's almost five inches thick and out of pure gold. 
Okay, that's impressive. Inside, you see a moderately sized room with four poster bed, a dresser, a desk, a big panorama window, and a balcony. And a strange contraption on a second desk. What is that? Looks at the strange contraption. It has a rectangular thing that is sitting on the desk itself, another rectangular thing that is sitting below the desk, and a rectangular thing that is sitting in front of the bigger rectangular thing on the desk with smaller rectangular things with letters on it. What is this? Oh wait, is this what I think it is? You can poke any of those items if you want. Pokes a random item. Which one? I don't know. Number one. As you poke it, it makes the sound of your claw hitting glass. Is this a computer? Maybe. Okay, that's weird. Looks around the room. So, how are we gonna get out of here without, you know, the entire place hunting for us? Also, where's the real princess? Script looks at you, smiling a little sadly, walking to the balcony. Come have a look. Walks out. And you see that you're actually in the highest tower of the castle. Overlooking the entire city. Whoa. First off, great view. Second off, we are so not getting out of this window. This balcony. Script chuckles. No. And I... No offense, but I don't think you have enough sheets on your bed to not together to get us a rope. But and then he points off to the science district of the city. Hmm. Look. Looks over. And suddenly you see one of the research facilities going up in flames. What what happened there? Sabotage. Ponies? No. Huh? Griffins? Mm -mm. What happened? The answer to your question. What happened to the princess? Mm -hmm. She's over there? Yes, she is. Is she okay? I don't know. At least not at this point. At this point, she should be okay. Then shouldn't she be coming back soon? I very much doubt it, because she's the one who's planted the explosives. Well, aren't they going to suspect that I planted the explosives? No, I very much doubt that, because you being here basically gives her an alibi. Does she know that? I very much doubt it. Script? Did mm. you kill her? Yes, I did. Why? By mistake. Mistake? Yes. I recognize this night now. Is this the night you escape? This is the night when it all begins. The night when Princess Lily sets me free. Looks at you. She's 
she's the one? Yes. And you killed her? In my defense, I was drugged up at the time and couldn't quite think clearly. Then we've got to save her. You want to change time? She's clearly like me. She had a pony lover, for goodness sake. Yes, she did, and his execution sparked this little rebellion of hers. Then we've got to save her. Are you sure about this? Wouldn't you do the same for me? I would, but... Please think about this. If you want to save her, you will have to go up against the crazed me. But here's the thing. She has something. I have something she doesn't. What? An invisible you. Boops your nose. In other words, by the way, the other me will very likely be able to see me. You want me to fight me. No. I want you to hold him off. So that we can get to the TARDIS. You are rewriting time. I'm not. Look. You say she dies tonight, right? Yes. So she doesn't have anything she needs to do after this, after releasing you, right? No, not as far as I know. Then, if we get her in the TARDIS and take her back to our time, it won't break anything in the timeline. The thing being... That her dead body is one of the reasons her mother hates me so much. And you think no having her having her not there will change much? Having seen the dead bodies other dead bodies? True. All we need to do is well get someone to tell her that you killed her. You killed her, his daughter, her daughter. Raises an eyebrow. Okay. And who would be suicidal enough to do that? Thinks for a moment. Because mm. whoever you're going to send to tell her that will be ripped to shreds. Oh. Okay, then, never mind. Just disappearance. Disappearance, girl. Disappearance should be enough. She's gonna blame you no matter what, anyway. If you say so. Pulls you into a hug. Hugs back. We need to do this. She's the... She's a mistake. She's one of the few that you even knew... Didn't want to be like her mother. I know. So, we will have to be down in the dining room in about 30 minutes. That's Dad? when she is going to loosen my shackles. <laughs> you remember the way? Oh, I do. The problem is, how are you going to convince her? Hmm. Convince her that I'm hurt, that I'm... That it's better to run away? Good luck. Anyhow. Love? Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, I'm thinking I should go, so I was kind of wanting to end on a cliffhanger! Hey, hey! 
So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. Yep. <laughs> How did you like Queen Lupina? Uh, you're making me like her and feel sorry for her. That's annoying. <laughs> She's clearly wanting to be a good mother. She just has some bad viewpoints. Mm hmm. <sighs> so you like Lupina now? I like her character. I still think she's annoying. <laughs> and I do think she's totally racist. Or would this be speciesist? I'm going to say speciesist. Spe speciesist, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I hope I didn't derail any plans by saying we need to go and find, go and help her and save her, save the daughter, Lily. A little, but okay. <laughs> Princess Lily. Likes the name. I do, I do. It's a little unusual. Why would she, why would she call her daughter after a beautiful flower? Because. Even as a pup, Lily was kind and gentle. Aww. Anyhow, guys, don't yep. forget that we both have our Patreons linked down below if you want to support the show. Yep. Support us and become part of the pack or what do you call your group? My loyal listeners. Loyal listeners. And don't forget, if you become part of my group, you get exclusive access to all of my stuff as downloads on G Drive. And with me, you get to vote every month on what story is going to be re uh, read that month. And previews and now, sometimes. And now, I say good night and till next time. And I say keep watching that moon, especially tonight.